yeah hi all this is prayas here i am working as a senior cloud architect and we are arranging this session for the blockchain and its different offerings <clears throat> so this session is getting organized on the behalf of azure development group in telegram which consists of more than 2200 members and we do have our website which is cloudcodes.com so we request everyone to go ahead and register it so that they can go ahead and get a calendar invitation for our session update as well as they can go ahead and navigate to the our youtube channel for referring all the past sessions and we do have the channel which is https://t.me.t.me/azuredevelopmentgroup for telegram so go ahead and join it over there and get a stay tuned for our sessions and other updates over to vijay Thank you, Prish. Uh, this is Vijay Baskar here, Managing Director for Vipram Bio Software Technologies Private Limited. So we are having this session today for blockchain and its different offerings. So what is there today in agenda? So basically, we are having four uh, points that we'll be touch basing today. One is number one is blockchain overview. Number two is blockchain process steps. Number three is blockchain offerings, and number four is blockchain on cloud. So we had a couple of sessions in the past. One was introduction to blockchain, and second one was about the demo uh, using the Ether code. So I hope uh, many people participated in this group and had a wonderful uh, exposure and experience to what uh, the uh, the owner uh, presented last time. So let's start with uh, blockchain overview. I, ho I, hope, I hope I'm audible to all the uh, participants over here. Please uh, stop me in case if I'm not audible. Thank you. So let's go to the blockchain overview. So what is what actually is a blockchain? So we need to understand uh, uh, the complexity that today that we are talking about in the industry on blockchain. It's basically it's very simple. It's a global ledger. So when I say global ledger, what actually we are referring to? Since this is a cloud, everybody knows what internet is all about. So our ledger, which is there in the cloud, or the ledger which is there in the internet, is what blockchain is all about. But only difference is that it's not a single uh, server hosted, it's a multi-server hosted, wherein each of your ledger is spread across the internet or your cloud environment. So how different is blockchain from other uh, standard uh, client server architecture? It's pretty much different because blockchain is nothing but an enhanced, secured link list. Something that we usually we have learned long time back in our college grads as well as we have done some couple of programming in database side. So we might be knowing about what linked list is all about and blockchain is nothing but a advanced secured linked list of the accounting uh, data entity, which actually we call as transaction. So that's what blockchain is all from the, from the core or from the base point of view. I hope this is clear from the point of blockchain uh, description so that makes us very much uh, clear so that we can proceed to blockchain process steps which is our next slide in our presentation going forward before i touch base on blockchain process step i would like to give you some bit more information on what we usually think about as an as a developer as a technical architect we usually have some sort of an information spreading across we hear about bitcoin we hear about um, other coins we hear about various hyperledger. Mm -hmm. So we hear quite a lot of things on blockchain that's happening currently. And we are talking about what is that we have got to do with the cloud from blockchain because is blockchain part of cloud or is blockchain not part of cloud? Or how does blockchain actually act in the real time environment? Is what we are going to look a bit in the coming slides. But let me, as you can see in the presentation, you can see that there's a block zero, block one and block two, which I'm trying to give you a little bit of 
uh, technical details of how the blockchain is getting linked. So when I say secured blockchain, what actually it means is that each of your data is encrypted and it, it is hashed. And why hashing is being done? Hashing is being done in order to ensure that the data cannot be tampered with so that when it is on the global internet, it's taken care that security is there for each data that is stored in the cloud. Second point is that since this data are spread across multiple servers or what we call in blockchain world as nodes, so these nodes actually receive each and every transaction in parallel so that every transaction is committed across all the nodes with consents. What do you mean by consents? It's that acceptance that, okay, this transaction is a valid and it's not a valid transaction. So if a transaction is valid, then it is accepted and it is committed in each of the nodes so that everyone who access to the blockchain environment gets the information on spot. Okay, so that's about a blockchain overview. So moving on to the blockchain process steps. Well, we can see that in process steps, we have step process number one is that your network then comes your communication then your validation verification and confirmation so what is network in blockchain since it is a DLT it is term called as DLT which stands for distributed ledger transaction which is a peer-to-peer -peer networking uh, uh, networking kind of a system PC system that we are dealing with in blockchain now whenever our data as I said in the, in the couple of minutes back when you pass a data the data is passed across the nodes over a peer-to-peer -peer network. So it means that what is peer-to-peer -peer network? We might, some people might be putting a question, what is this peer-to-peer -peer network? Where do I see this peer-to-peer -peer network? Have I used this peer-to-peer -peer network in the past or not? Yes, we have been doing it. We have been doing it peer-to-peer -peer network. Our Outlook Microsoft uses a peer-to-peer -peer network. Our Microsoft Office uses a peer-to-peer -peer network. Our Skype uses a peer-to-peer -peer network. Right, and we also try to use peer-to-peer -peer network in quite uh, lots of other uh, platforms. For example, your chatbot uses a peer-to-peer -peer network. So peer-to-peer -peer network is very pretty much common. So that's exactly what blockchain is trying to um, drill into depth, wherein the peer-to-peer -peer network, in, instead of just communicating, instead of just like, like SQL database or RDBMS database, trying to use the peer-to-peer -peer network for data based storing, where what we're trying to do is that we're trying to communicate to multiple nodes instead of single node in a, like a kind of architecture so that every node is communicated of the transaction that's being done. So it is unbreakable in case of anyone is trying to hack the system. So that's about uh, networking and communication. What happens in the communication? So the communication is nothing but once you get into a blockchain system, once you communicate a transaction or once you commit a transaction, the communication is responsible for transferring the data to all the nodes in the blockchain environment. So once this data has been transferred to all the nodes in the environment, in the internet, in the cloud or the cloud, the validation takes place. So validation is nothing but an algorithm that is being used or a protocol that's being set up which has been independent to each vendors. Uh, when I say vendors or various platforms offerings that each company is offering, which we'll touch base in the next slide. So that is initiated and it is validated whether the transaction is valid or not. Once the validation has been accepted, it's committed across the nodes so that the next blocks can be created and we can process it. So that's the verification part and finally the confirmation part. Okay, so that is blockchain process step. I hope these process steps are pretty much clear to the audience over here. If there's any uh, questions on these process steps, please raise it. Can I move on to the next slide? Okay, yes, let's look can. at the blockchain. Sure, uh, thanks Prish. So let's, let, let's, more, let's look at the blockchain offerings. Uh, so we have today we have identified four different uh, vendors over here. One is one number one is that the forum organizational vendor, which uh, where Linux, IBM, and uh, others are participating, which is your first column. And second column is your Ethereum, which we have seen in the past two sessions. And third one is Ripple, and fourth one is Bitcoin. So we are looking at four different offerings. Apart from this, we have got multiple offerings in the market, which we have not mentioned over here because we have just picked up the lead offerings 
from the blockchain perspective. Yeah. So the first one is that if you look at it, Hyperledger, we call it as Hyperledger, IBM Hyperledger. So basically IBM has taken up the lead position to implement the blockchain solutions in with collaboration with Linux foundations. Okay. So then comes the Ethereum who have their own uh, general purpose blockchain. So basically it is developed based on the um, Solidity programming language. And then we have got Ripple Labs, which is quite another vendor who's offering a blockchain infrastructure for us and then comes the finally comes the bitcoin developers so let's look at the governance each of this um, uh, blockchain offerings that we have got hyperledger is based on linux foundation so basically your all your environment your operating system that works on it is on linux platform and when it comes to ethereum you have got both in linux and windows you have got and you have got triple labs which is again a network of environment on dlt platform then finally, we have got Bitcoin developers, as everybody knows. Everybody have used it, so most of them have downloaded the Bitcoin APIs, and it can be done in both in Unix as well as in the Linux or in the Windows world. Now, what we have been hearing about blockchain today is common is about about the uh, the cryptocurrency. So the term cryptocurrency is quite famous, which has been blocking us in internet and everybody knows about what cryptocurrency is all about nowadays, and that what has attracted towards the blockchain. So when people talk about blockchain, people think, okay, it's all about online currency. And is there anything else into the blockchain? Well, yes, we do have a lot, lot of things in blockchain. Cryptocurrency is just one side of the application of blockchain. So you can see that from the offerings, currency, Hyperledger V is not focused on cryptocurrency. Uh, Ethereum does, yes, we have an Ether coin that we have been seen in the last uh, demo sessions. And then finally, we have got Ripple Labs where they don't, Oh, I mean, they offer an XRP currency and then Bitcoin, everybody knows it's a BTC. A couple of people do offer mining rewards and a couple of them don't. For example, the Ether does as well as the blockchain does, whereas Hyperledger and Ripple, they don't offer any rewards for mining. Yeah. And how actually this is the protocol, how actually the data has been stored in what format is also mentioned in the state of the uh, parameter so in case hyperledger it's a key value database in case of uh, the ethereum it's account data in case of ripple it's none it's a free form and in, in, in case of blockchain it's a transactional data because it's highly used for cryptocurrency it's very common in the world for in it's very common in cryptocurrency world now consensus network what actually consensus means is that acceptance by different parties different parties in the node in the cloud so that says pluggable is what uh, hyperledger follows uh, mining is what uh, ether follows and ripple protocol is something that ripple is following and again blockchain is also mining so this is exactly the one of the reason why when we go to sessions like ethereum sessions or when you go to social bitcoin we hear about lots of minings it's mining is not something which is very tagged to blockchain because blockchain can be implemented in multiple different formats when it comes to distributed ledger technology because it is called as DLT. Now blockchain is a very old term. People don't use that term nowadays. What term that people use now is that it's called as DLT, which stands for distributed ledger technology. Yeah. So then comes network. So if you can see that uh, Hyperledger is something which goes for private and Ethereum goes for private and public and Ripple goes for public and Bitcoin is public. Yeah, privacy, security is open to private, open, open and open. Yeah, smart contracts. Hyperledger is something which is supports a multiple languages because basically it is a it's a collaboration or a forum. Uh, uh, forum that has been built for blockchain so it supports java language it supports go language and when, when it comes to ethereum ethereum is basically supporting a solidity programming language and ripple there's no programming language support because you just have to use the framework uh, the apis that has been built uh, for ripple and blockchain is basically bitcoin when i say bitcoin is basically is built on c plus but they have not planned to provide any support of programming language but you can extend it if you want to go for it which people have done in the past so that's the so those are all the offerings from various vendors that we have seen in the market today apart from this we have got other uh, small time vendors who actually go for custom offerings like ICOs where they usually they build based on blockchains now when it comes to ICO ICO is something quite different so what other things is there in the in the blockchain world apart from the cryptocurrencies we have got something called as ico which is called as initial coin offerings 
And this initial coin offering is something which usually nowadays people are using it for just like similar to IPO initial public offerings. They try to market the products and portfolios in order to make sure that it is circulated within a community or a group and a new currency is created. So that's from the ICO point of view. Any questions so on? Any doubts or any questions you have got before we move on to the blockchain on cloud? Just let me know in case if I'm a bit fast or it's not clear to the audience so that I can pass it. I'm very open so that we can have a collaborative session over here, more interactive ones. Okay. So moving on to the next slide, which is blockchain on cloud. Now, this is a very important slide for this particular group because the group is fully made up of cloud architects and cloud developers interested people. So people might be knowing that now, now today's people Vijay, are sorry offering. Yeah. You. Sure. We are unable to see your slide probably which you are referring. You're not able to see my slide? No, Just you can second. see the slide, but it is um, blockchain process step is the main slide which we can see now. Yeah. Can you see that? Blockchain on cloud? No. Maybe it's, it's taking some time. Just let me know once you once it pops up so that I can continue. Yeah. I mean, I'm slide blockchain on cloud. Slide six. Yeah, we are seeing slide four. Yeah, we are seeing. You are seeing one. slide four. Yeah. yeah. One second. And you can complete it to five, but still it's one second. Strong. Sure, sure. Let me just try to see. Five, six. Is it coming now? Still not. It's swing slide four only. Yeah, we can Once see. Again. No, not yet. It's still same only. Four only. One second. Let me stop and let me uh, yeah, represent please. it so that. Please, yeah, please. Sure. Yeah, now we can see Hyperledger based Bluemix blockchain. You can see? Yeah, we can see blockchain on cloud, yes. Yeah, okay. So let me try to continue with that. Okay, so coming to the blockchain on cloud. So most of the uh, people in the group would be uh, quite happy to see this uh, uh, slide because we are all cloud um, evangelist over here. So what, what is cloud, uh, blockchain and cloud is all about? Because now Microsoft, IBM, all these people are trying to offer BAS, which is blockchain as service. The reason why they're trying to offer this uh, is because they already have that uh, uh, infrastructure with them, which is actually a DLT platform, which you can see in the uh, presentation, all those uh, dark blue with uh, blockchain, VP0, VP1, VP2, and VP3 which is virtual platform 0, 1, and 2, and 3, so which actually gives you the ability to communicate to different nodes. So IBM provides the infrastructure based on the Hyperledger platform, which is called as Fabric platform. And then Microsoft is trying to provide based on Ethereum and so on. So you can see that there are quite a lot of things. It's in blockchain has nothing to do with cryptocurrency alone, but you also have quite a lot of things that we can build, like supply chain management, like CRM uh, customer relationship management, and order management, inventory, okay, and security, and so on. So quite a lot of things can be done in the blockchain. So IBM Bluemix is one cloud, if I'm not wrong, right? And then you have got IBM is this is basically picked up from the IBM because I've not uh, uh, come up with the for Microsoft, which is Ethereum, which is quite popular, which is there in the market, and we have already covered this in the last session. How actually the architecture for Ethereum and how does it look like? Well, so that's where actually we have this Hyperledger Blue Mix blockchain application at a very high level. Okay, so before we go to Q&A sessions, I would like to know if there's any any uh, question that audience have got that they want me to explain in a bit more details. And once we complete with our interactive discussions, we can move on to the Q&A.
Okay. Yes. So let's move on to the Q and A session. Okay. Now, yep. Yes, sir. Sure. So Vijay, we would like to know that how actually it works in reality. We can understand in technical terms, but yep. how does it really gets materialized? Because we can okay. understand that normally will some company will be having a share, and they can get give a bit of a share, they can sell it, and people they own it and they sell it. So how does this really gets materialized on the ground reality? Because okay, you want. I mean, see, uh, thanks, Prish, for the question. It's a wonderful question. So basically, we are asking two questions over here. The question number one is that how actually the cryptocurrency is working in the real market, right? And question number two is that how actually am I supposed to implement a supply chain management or a accounting software or a, a CRM kind of a software into the blockchain? So there are two questions over here. Now, question number one is that cryptocurrencies, that is what you see in the world of Bitcoin and what you see in the world of Ether coins. So there, what's happening is that you can create your own cryptocurrencies and you have got quite a lot of public portals which helps you to create the cryptocurrencies of your own and you can market it. Now, what do you mean by marketing it? It's basically, it's nothing but say we have got a cloud group over here. We have got more than 2,000 people. It's a good uh, forum for us to launch our own cryptocurrency. We can do that. And we can do that and we can uh, speak to all the participants and all to the members of this particular group to say, okay, guys, look, I have my this cryptocurrency, which is called as Indian dollar. Okay, it's not Bitcoin, but it's an Indian dollar, which I have uh, created over the internet using the Ethereum uh, Bitcoin framework or using the Bitcoin framework, which I have got my own currency. And I, I start transacting with this Bitcoin, so please kindly accept it. So it's based on a consensus that everybody in this group try to accept it. Once you accept it, it starts moving out, right? So when 2,000 people try to accept that currency and come to an agreement, okay, I do agree with this cryptocurrency, with this cryptocurrency, and I can transact with them, and I put some value to it, it becomes uh, online currency for us. That's that, that's number that, that's number three point. And the fourth point, what we are talking about is that ICO. Now, ICO is nothing but launching of a currency into the acceptance into the public. So what is that? For example, let's take the example of this cloud architecture group itself. I can launch a cryptocurrency called as Indian dollar and say, guys, I'm launching this cryptocurrency for Indian dollar similar to the Bitcoin or similar to the Ethereum coin. So please kindly take off, take this particular transaction and try to refer to you wherever you try to do a further transaction. Please integrate it with your applications and so that it becomes a de facto standard for this community. So that's how the blockchain, uh, this currency is getting hit into the market and once you do that and then you start trading it trading is like any company that's like bitcoin trades in in the, in the stock exchange or when the company tries to stay trade all day so you start getting attention the worldwide global wide because everybody knows that how this particular transaction sorry how this particular cryptocurrency is being accepted in the world and the more and more the number of people start using a particular uh, cryptocurrency in the transaction, in the usage, in the product, the value of the particular cryptocurrency gets increased. And that's what is happening to Bitcoin and other coins. Because now other coins have got more applications, more business applications, which they're trying to demonstrate, which people are trying to use. And that's the reason why the stock market, stock price is getting increased. Now, when it comes to Bitcoin, Bitcoin is def default standard that everybody have started using Bitcoin for their uh, currency transaction and primarily this is in the US market. That's the reason why you can see that there's a huge hike in increase because number of Bitcoin that has been released is very but much lesser. It works in a demand and supply uh, way wherein your demand is more and your supply is very less as of now. So that's how the entire system is basically a financial economic system that goes in, gets into the Bitcoin as well as to other coins or any other coin, right? Uh, how it works. Is that answers the questions, Priyash? Yeah. So, but still, okay. I have a question. Just, uh, just I wanted to start it, but uh, just to think, I have started my cryptocurrency, and people they may start to accept it also. But in the ground reality, still, how it is going to materialize it? Suppose maybe it's still not very clear. Just I know that uh, someone has start went and purchased pizza, then purchased car, and this is mm -hmm. the way they have accepted it. And from there yes. only, probably not only that, some companies are paying the salary also into the bitcoin See, uh, I, I agree so if we, we we can always do that See, that's what exactly I'm, what i'm trying to say is that it's a it's a website it's a platform that you try to provide because ethereum has provided the platform sorry i can hear some questions coming from the 
group. Somebody else is putting some further question. Hello. No, please continue, Vijay. Okay. So, uh, what 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 actually is that happening in the background of the screen is that Ethereum has provided your platform, Bitcoin has provided your platform for connecting with their currency, cryptocurrency. So now, if you provide a platform, for example, say I'm hosting a currency on a server on a cloud, okay, and I'm, I'm, I have exposed an API, which actually gives me the creation of currencies, operation of tokens, what they call in in this. Uh, blockchain world as tokens because tokens is nothing but the reason why tokens they were, were named as tokens is because it's not something visible to the common man because it's everything is encrypted and hashed right so when something is encrypted and hashed it is they name, name it as a tokens so when this token is shared across in any other transaction and say you can build an application like Paytm right now, today Paytm is trying to give you based on the uh, Indian rupees. Now, if you tomorrow, if you host a particular currency in your cloud server and give an API to bind it with the platform applications and say, okay, I want to deal all my transactions going forward, not in Indian rupees, but in a cryptocurrency format, which could be an Indian dollar or, or it could be any other currency, then your transaction kickstarts from that day onwards. That's how it works on the at the ground level. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Thanks. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? So in India, they have Miss ICCI and SBI. Probably they have started doing some transaction, or the first ICCI has uh, done some testing with uh, Bitcoin. So why government yep. is uh, not permitting to purchase us uh, Bitcoin in a specific region? See, it's not about purchasing a Bitcoin because currently Bitcoin is not that stable. It's not that in, if you look at if you compare the Indian market with the market of US audience or Indian audience, right? So Indian audience are not that comfortable with currently because the there's a huge amount of surge that's happening in the blockchain world basically the cryptocurrency world yeah so people are just watching to see whether we can go for it or not people some people have brought it and some people have really experienced it but nobody is able to confidently get into the market and say okay I can go with it because I am confident that it is going to pick up as it moves on because now it just started now you know that a government of Andhra Pradesh has decided to go for blockchain implementation and it Government also are thinking about going for Indian implementation. RBI, which is Reserve Bank of India, is thinking about to come up with its own currency, cryptocurrency. So now each government around the globe is trying to come up with their own cryptocurrency, which is an alternative currency to to main currency, what all they already have. So definitely, in next five to ten years, we can see that every government or every country is coming up with their own cryptocurrencies, and possibly blockchain would be a past in the history or maybe the blockchain is going to lead up everything and bridging us all the countries as a global economy leader. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, looks like uh, we don't have uh, much questions today. So possibly we'll wait for another five or ten minutes so that if anybody has any questions, we can just uh, take it up. If not, we'll uh, close this session. Is that fine? Yeah. So among the audience, does anyone has tried to work in Bitcoin or something? Any idea? Any exposure? I think possibly the better way to put the question is that what is what is audience is looking for? Uh, rather than saying that if anybody has worked in, definitely I'm sure that 70 to 90 percent of people have not worked on uh, the blockchain. Basically, people would have experimented in some of the demo version of the other coins or bitcoins. They would have seen some videos. The question is that. What is that they're looking for in blockchain from their current experience, right?
So if you guys have any questions from your work experience that what you like, what you have understood based on blockchain, if you want to ask any questions, please go ahead. We'll try to answer those questions and, and we can join your work in some of the projects that we're looking at. It's a good forum platform for us to connect together to understand blockchain better. Yeah, hi, uh, Vijay. Uh, this is Nitesh here. I just want to know if it's uh, still uh, profitable to mine bitcoins on, uh, let's say, AWS cloud uh, resources. Will will it turns out to be profitable right now, or how is it going to be? See, I mean, this is this is a very complicated question. It's a good question, but a very complicated question. Uh, frankly speaking, there are two things over here. It's it's a benefit for you to mine it. Definitely, I won't say that there's no benefit in mining, yeah. But but the question is that what sort of a processing power that you have got for mining, because you need to have a real good infrastructure to do the mining for either be a Bitcoin mining or whether you want to go for an Ethereum mining. Because if you look at the transaction cost that it is charging, it's huge, huge processing because it has to go perform an algorithmic check against each nodes and then commit communication uh, so looking at those things definitely it has got its benefit that you can go for it but then I may not say that on the longer run we might face lots of challenges because uh, we have lots of challenges today if you go to the various platforms like any new technologies will have lots of challenges so we always have these challenges in the blockchain also and similarly looking at the way the blockchain is getting spread across the market so possibly uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin may not be the only one that we may be looking for. We might have to wait for others to get into the market. So let's wait for a while. I would say be cautious and let's wait for a while before we actually dig deep into it or burn our fingers. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? I think uh, we are getting lots of questions from cryptocurrency side of it. Uh, any questions from anybody has experience in terms of uh, uh, working on a distributed technology uh, from their current uh, development domain or products or any initiatives they're doing currently. So that could be really a good uh, opportunity for the, uh, the forum to in fact and discuss if there's anything. Okay. Yeah, Vijay. So, what do what do you do, Prepresh? Shall we? Yeah. I think so, there's no more questions. Yeah, looks like the same only. So, do we have any closing comment or feedback for us to improve? Is that question for me, Prepresh? No, it was for others actually too. Okay. Then to you too also. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, are there any uh, like resources online where we can develop our skills on these? Yes, of course, you have got many uh, plenty of, uh, of resources. Possibly, I'll do one thing. I'll just share across uh, the uh, how to create your own currencies. Yeah, how to um, uh, experiment with your um, solidity programming languages, or how we have lots of lots of platform and platforms that you don't need to really get into a. A uh, little bit of installation and so on. You can do it everything online. So, Paul, okay. I'll share those uh, uh, those uh, resources and links to creation. Uh, Creation can circulate it to all the audience in this group. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. <coughs> we will do that surely, Vijay. Yeah. And in the meantime, uh, Vijay has already updated some code in GitHub, and the link has been oh, shared in our group. So this. this time for me to speak on that because basically what I've done is that since we have been discussing thanks Prish for uh, reminding me on that okay so what I've done is that guys I mean uh, team uh, friends what I've done is that since you we saw that we have got Ethereum we have got Bitcoin we have got Hyperledger and we have got Ripple so all these things platforms are based on C C++ 
and um, other uh, programming languages. So me coming from a Microsoft uh, background, uh, very fond of DB and C Sharp. So I decided to do something on Microsoft, which is not just not Microsoft what he has tied up with uh, Ethereum framework, Solidity framework. So I have come up with my own uh, uh, blockchain framework, which I've started uh, developing. So that's what has been hosted in the GitHub. So possibly uh, Prish can share it one more time to the uh, group. So this particular code, what it does is that it creates you a DLT uh, framework, uh, set of uh, C-sharp uh, codes, right? So you can use this particular API to communicate, which is nothing but setting sending messages to each different nodes, multiple nodes, and ensuring that it gets committed on three different environments or three different separate places. So now that is the first step that we have done. The second step that what we're going to do is that we're going to create some consensus-based um, computation weight, which is going to validate between each of the nodes and say, okay, I have received this particular message, so you have received this particular message, and everything is fine, and we're going to commit this data into the function. So that's the kind of development we're trying to do. And why we are, we are doing this in C-sharp is that so that we have got a good wider market, C-sharp developers and C-sharp community over there. And quite a lot of people are from Java background who actually has got a fair amount of interest in C-sharp also. Even people from cloud environment, lots of applications are there which can actually be extended because lots of people are now today developing on REST APIs. Uh, which is uh, and microservices. So this uh, framework is going to help us in, in order to push and enhance it in a seamless manner. So that's our focus and that's where we're targeting to build this uh, framework. Yeah. So anybody is interested can go to the GitHub, download the code and have a look at it, how we have implemented the hashing and how we have implemented the security and how we have implemented the encryption codes and how it's communicating to different nodes. So that gives you some sort of an idea. So if people are interested, they can go ahead and they can do changes to the code and contribute towards the other aspects of the blockchain uh, requirements or uh, rules that we need to follow. Yeah. So that's a little bit of uh, VM Entra, the blockchain framework based on Cisha. Yeah, thanks Vijay. Thanks for a great opportunity you have given us for trying the code because normally we don't get anything, especially in CSRP even in the net too. So great opportunity you have given to us to try. Uh, thanks, Prish. Basically, uh, thanks for that, Prish. Basically, what I would like to request the uh, group and friends over here is that try to you know, have a look at the code and see how it works because basically people tend to get um, um, feel that okay, blockchain is something which is beyond. Uh, something which is different and is something beyond a very complex uh, uh, software tool or a platform. No, don't look into those, don't get it so complicated, make it simple. All I would like to say is that think blockchain as being a enhanced secured link list and you get and you try to solve everything. So that's the big uh, plus point over there. All that's going to happen is that the data because in a linked list, you have got addresses, you know very well, address and the data. The data is what is where the data, I mean, the code is being stored, what you call a smart contracts. So that is being stored in the data, and that data is being processed by different engines, like Ethereum engine or like Ripple engine or Bitcoin engine. So that's actually the engine that what is going to be written in, in any programming language that you guys are comfortable with. So that's where you can create more distributed ledger applications or be ready for the upcoming boom that's happening in the blockchain applications that Indian market is looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Vijay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, for all the participants who have participated in this uh, session. So let's uh, look forward for uh, better sessions and I'm planning to conduct more sessions as we move on. Yeah, thanks Vijay. So we'll have a chain of sessions for us to understand blockchain in a much better way. So stay yes. tuned and join our Telegram group, Azure Development Group. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Someone wants to share their comment or the closing comments, feedback, anything for us to improve in a better way. So we have already got comment from the Rahul, Ankur and all. 
ओके थैंक्स एवरीवन फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इट वाज वेरी गुड सेशन अंकुल थैंक यू अंकुल थैंक्स राहुल थैंक यू गुड इंफॉर्मेशन थैंक यू थैंक यू ओके थैंक्स विजय फॉर योर टाइम एंड एवरीवन फॉर ज्वाइनिंग thank you thank you very much everyone and uh, sure, thank you the video will be getting uploaded and you can go ahead and refer our website which is cloudcodes.com k l o u d c o d e s cloudcodes.com and stay tuned over in our website for more details yeah even thanks. for the past sessions too thank you everyone bye 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 good night take care good night good day bye